This is a mess. Welcome back to another episode of My Legacy Garage. Today, we're going to go across the pond, visit Great Britain, England, the land of fish and chips, Big Ben, not the Steelers, the clock tower thing, and midgets, the MG midget. I've never even touched one of these before, so I don't know how this is going to go. I know nothing about them. Not sure why I do this to myself, but we're going to give it a shot. Supposedly 10-ish years or so since it ran. It's been sitting here for, I don't know, I can't remember why. I bought it forever ago. Let's drag it out, see what it looks like, because I don't remember. I remember thinking this was stupid, but I did it anyway, because I don't really know why. I mean, it was going to go to the junk heap otherwise, so I guess it's worth saving. I don't know. Let's pull it out and have a look and decide together. Oh, boy. I suppose the first order of business is to get the covers off of it. As I recall, there's like three or four of them. It's probably full of wasps. It's being held down by old brake drums. I think there's a... Yeah, that's a clutch. I guess let's just start pulling stuff off and see where the wasps come out of because I don't particularly feel like getting stung today. I need to take the iron off. How did you do that so good? You just do it. Watch, like this. Just snag it and throw it. If there's any bees in there, they'll be, they'll be gone away from me before they even know what happened. I'll grab the clutch there. Let's see where the bees are coming out of. Well, I'll do it quickly then. Definitely. Are you scared? Yes. Are you scared? It's like stuck. How does it get stuck to the thing? Well, it's rusted fast to it. You got to take it out. It's it's a fly, AJ, not a not a wasp. You'll be all right, I promise. Look, big strapping lad like you. Even if it stings you, like you'll be all right. All right, let's take cover number one off. Get a hold of it up here on the front. And we're going to go straight back with it. You ready? Yeah. One, two, three. All right, let's get this one, get it off of there. And... Woo! Time for this one. <laughs> Maybe we should just put the covers back on and forget about this. I don't remember it being quite this bad. couple cobwebs there's probably some snakes living in it I don't know I suppose we should try and get it out of here look that tire even still has a little air in it huh well I'll be all right let's try and move it No snakes were harmed in the filming of this video. It's good to know that he was calling that car home though. I wonder what else we're going to find in there. Let's finish straightening up the yard and then we'll go find out. It made it into the shop. What we have here is a 1976 MG Midget. Now, 76 was the first year with the ugly rubber bumpers which are missing on this car. But if it had them, that's what would be on it. And a lot of people, they hate on those cars, but, you know, it's not so bad. And you can put the chrome bumpers on them, I think. I'm pretty sure they just mount right up. Either way, that's what we've got. Now, the bonus to it being a 76 is that it has the Mark IV engine in it, which is the 1500cc engine. Started out at 65 horsepower. By the time all the emissions and everything was done to it, it was like 50 horsepower. And it just it couldn't compete. 1980 was the last year that they built these. They went 61 to 80. This side's not so, so bad. It's got a little rot right there in the A pillar there, or whatever you want to call it, in the bottom of the fender. 
but the rockers and stuff are good. The tires even hold air on this side. It's got uh, it's got a hole through the floor. Pretty typical. Now a lot of the stuff that's missing is supposedly in the car and in the trunk. So I don't know. It's got mismatched wheels on it. The tires are uh, there. I don't think they're gonna hold air. I'm gonna guess that's just shot completely. If we can get it running, we're probably gonna have to do something about that. A little rot in the bottom of that fender, but otherwise it's pretty solid and pretty straight. The interior is all here, so it's not what you would call mounted. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. Oh, it's got keys. That's a step in the right direction. Like I said, I don't really remember a lot about this thing from when I bought it. As I recall, that trunk isn't actually bolted down. MG is a British company. These are made in England and then, you know, transported here, which is pretty cool. I mean, you see German cars all the time and Japanese and Korean and of course American made, but it's not often that you see English made cars you know like jaguar and stuff they're just they're just not around this area here that's what made it really interesting to me and why i bought it because i like to buy things that i can't get parts for and know nothing about and that i'll probably regret it's what i do it is what it is either way let's see how england builds a car something else fun it's a midget if you're curious what exactly is a midget Make sure you Google MG Midget, not just Midget. It can get a little weird otherwise. But these cars are tiny. I mean, tiny. Little 13 inch wheels. It's only 4 foot tall and less than 12 feet long total. The wheelbase is only 80 inches. It is tiny. First impressions are, well, that's a cute little engine. And then I noticed this right here and this and I thought to myself that's probably not good I suppose it's going to be a lot easier to mess with if we take the hood off so I think we're going to do that so we can get better access and then we'll investigate where the battery goes and then maybe if it has anything that still functions that sounds like a good course of action well the first bolt snapped right out of the hoods apparently you have to use an actual ratchet instead of easy power tools pick the hood up come around I'm gonna go ahead and pull the plugs out of this thing. That's probably gonna have a misfire there since the plug wire fell apart. Just see what we've got going on in here. What we've got here is quite the rusty spark plug. That's not a good sign at all. That one's just sooty. So far it's the number two plug is the one that's rough. And I'm guessing that you can't actually take the number one plugs out without taking the alternator off. That's definitely what it looks like. I'm hoping this thing didn't freeze and break. Let me show you what we got going on here. We already saw that on the thermostat housing, but the back side of it is laying there. That's not a good sign at all. I think, uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and lube this one because it's probably going to need it. I'm a little concerned about this motor, to be honest. I think now that we've lubed the cylinders, what we're going to do is tape up some bare wires that I'm going to show you here in a second and then throw a battery in it and see if we can get this thing to spin. If it's stuck, try and get it broke free because I don't think I want to put any more effort into this thing if the motor's stuck. It's not really a lot of value to these cars for some reason. They're neat, cool little cars, but... Nobody actually wants one, apparently. Anyway, 
If you like this sort of stuff, make sure you hit that like button. Really appreciate it. It helps the channel out, lets people know, hey, this, you know, it's entertaining. It's worth watching. And uh, while you're at it, hit the subscribe button. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. It means the world to us. Helps the channel out. Helps us grow. And uh, makes us so we can buy stuff like this to try and get running on a really, really hot day. Whew. All right, let's get back to it. I feel like this battery cable, which is the positive one, might have some issues. Let's see what we can do about that. I thought about wrapping this with electrical tape, but uh, that seems like a bad idea. So I have this other cable laying around. It just goes to like a starter solenoid or something right here. So I'm going to pop that off of there, get rid of this little crappy cable, put this one on there. And we'll just use that for now because I don't have high hopes for this thing. So let's try that, see what that does. All right, let's uh, put a battery in it and see what we can make it do. Negative is in bad shape too, but hopefully it'll, you know, conduct electricity. What is, uh, what is that? Well, I hope it's not important because I have no idea what it's for or where it goes. It might not even be for this car. It seems like some sort of a vacuum port. Maybe there's a fuel pump or something maybe. Speaking of which, before we try and crank it, we should unhook fuel. Well, that's already done for us, so that's convenient. Go ahead and get our NASCAR battery hold downs here. Let's see if fire happens. Well, I don't see sparks or smell fire, so that's a good sign. Is there any power in it? Corn doesn't work. I don't know. Well, that doesn't sound good. Well, folks, I don't think the battery's dead. That only leaves one possible explanation for that. It's stuck. How do you even get to the crank bolt on these things? You gotta take the whole radiator out of it? Fun fact, you have to take the radiator out to get at the crank bolt. That's what we're gonna do. Oh, I didn't expect there to be anything in that. That's it. We've been steady at it. Got the alternator loose and moved so we could get the number one plug out. I took the radiator out. You, you can't get on a crank bolt. It's got like a huge nut up there, but the sway bar is in the way. You just, you can't get to it. I have decided to fill the engine with Marvel's mystery oil, and that's what we're gonna do. A little magic juice and hope it works. I guess one positive thing is that it's easy to get a funnel in these. We're gonna really let number two get a good drink of this stuff. Fill her all the way to the tippy top. All right, she is officially lubed. For y'all, it's been half a second. In reality, it's been almost two weeks since we put the old marble in there. Time to look at it and see what we've got. Well, that's number one right there. And I can see the piston, that all drained. Same thing on four. Can't really see three, but it did. Number two though is still chock full of oil. I suppose that before we go medieval on it, and really try and force stuff, that we should try the starter. And it's still stuck as expected. The cable got warm quick. As you can see down in here, I got the, well, that's the steering rack actually, not a stabilizer bar, sorry. You can see you can't get to it. right in front of that big old nut on the front of the crank there. I have an idea I'm gonna try. May or may not work, but hey, why not give it a shot? Nothing to lose at this point, honestly. It might be a good idea, it might be a bad idea, but it's an idea. Got a big old pipe wrench and a cheater bar. I'm gonna stick her on the outside of that pulley and crank on it and see what happens. Oh, the cheater bar doesn't fit. That's great. Well, let's just try it the old fashioned way then. Oh boy, she's locked up tighter than Fort Knox. Well, I'm going to say that it is permanently stuck. Bummer. Everybody say a solemn prayer for this one. She's a goner. You can't save them all. But it looks like somebody's already been using it for parts. And, well, that's what we're going to do, too. Because I've got a surprise coming up. But first, let's pay our respects.
How many of you fine viewers out there in YouTube land have noticed this sitting in the shop? It's been here for months, maybe even a year. It's been a long time. This is the surprise. It's another one. Before we dig into this car, I want to take a second to mention that I'm going to be on Stuff with Cletus Live on July 21st, 7 p.m. Central. Come stop by, say hi, learn a little bit more about me, what we do, why we do it. It's going to be a good time. It's a good show. Robert's Garage is going to be on there with me too. And I know a lot of y'all know him. He's awesome. Let's give y'all a walk around of this fine beauty here. This is a 1973 MG Midget. This one is special because it has been stored in a shed since 1979. It has been quite a while since it has been on the road. Basically uh, as long as I've been alive. The original interior is in it and still in pretty good shape. It's got some love marks up there on the dash but otherwise good. The floors are solid. She's not very rusty. The only rust to speak of really is where they all rust right there and then the front of the car was sticking out of the shed is what I was told anyway and that makes sense because that's rusty that's rusty and that under there is rusty but it's still pretty cool because it's 73 which means it's the old chrome bumpers the better looking version I like it it's a pretty cool little car the only real concern is well it hasn't ran in 40 something years that could be an issue but let's give her a look see what we can do with it step one let's check out the engine bay Well, it looks different than the last one. Somebody has been tinkering around in here. The air box is off of it. Radiator's gone. Smog pump is still on it. That's fun. I'm not sure. That's for the carburetors, I guess. The battery cables are a little rough. It might require some massaging. There's a bunch of random stuff. The distributor cap is off. I don't know, I guess the first thing we need to do is take the spark plugs out of it. Shoot some PB blaster down in there, lube her up, and then uh, see if she spins over. It seems like as good a place as any to start. The plugs appear to be, well, brand new. They're not very tight. Oh, this one's not even screwed in all the way. And they are brand new. Never run. wonder what I should make of that. The gentleman I bought this from, he had this one and the one we just pronounced dead. He bought them together. He was cleaning out his garage. He was finally getting a, a lift in there, which was a lifelong goal of his. He just, he'd been storing this in there for so many years and he knew he wasn't going to do anything with it. So he just wanted it gone. So I obliged him and made it disappear. Question is, was it a good choice? I was told he had had that one running 10 years ago or something like that. And this one had belonged to a friend of his, and he had put it in his shed and had been sitting there since 1979. Judging by the condition and the originality of it, I'd say that's probably true. Though it looks like somebody was trying to get it going, or maybe they borrowed some parts from it. I'm not sure. But either way, I think this is our best chance. Oh look, a windshield wiper. Did you guys ever notice these cars have three windshield wipers? It's really weird. I suppose we should... Uh, See about getting a battery hooked up to it. Let that PB soak in there while we're doing that and then uh, hit the key and see what happens. I like it. Let's do it. I have replaced the bad cable with a 
exceptionally over long one, but you know that gives us flexibility on battery placement, which is important on these old cars because you never really know where you're gonna have to put stuff. It's gonna reach. Okay, good. And let's do a fire test. Got a light on inside here. A little red light. We've got a spinner, but does the horn work? Well, how do you like that? Let's see what we can do about spark, I guess? So the oil dipstick is right here, and uh, it's full and got really nice clean oil in it. And I can doubly assure you that's true because we have now dumped oil onto the floor down there. And I was like, oh man, where's that coming from? Well, it's coming out of that hole right there. And I was like, well, what's that for? And then I found this thing, which is an oil filter assembly. And that tube that runs to that bolt right there, sure looks like it goes right there. And the rest of it sure looks like it goes right down there. So I'm going to see if I can find some hardware that I can put that back together. It's building oil pressure, which is good, but it's just running out of the engine, which is bad. Let me see if I can sort that out. I am hopeful that there are parts and pieces to this car in the trunk that I'm unaware of. Let's see what we can find. Well, there is stuff in here. Oh, there's the radiator. The glove box door. Well, I guess that is missing. Uh, that'll come in handy if we get it running. There's another glove box door. All right then. Uh, there's an ashtray. A uh, rando gasket. I guess that's for back here. Yeah, I bet so. I don't know why you take that off. Uh, I wonder why that's in there. I'll look at another radiator just in case, you know, the one isn't enough. I wonder which one's the right one. That looks pretty sad, but I might be able to salvage that coil wire since the other one just disintegrated. Wow, how about that? Original jack? That's pretty cool. Yes, and these are grills. Yep. Pretty sad shape, and no bolts, no bolts at all. I wanted to give you guys a close up inside the trunk just to show you how solid this car is. There's no rust in the floor back here, up in the wheel wells, in the quarters, even way in the back. It's all solid, really cool. The underside is just as impressively solid. It's got no rust holes, nothing. Even the exhaust looks decent. Plus it's got that nice puddle of oil from the oil filter issue. Pretty tight little car. I believe I have pieced together everything that we need. I've got an O-ring out of a garden hose to seal this. The big bolt still has the crush washer on, on it, so that should seal then. And then in case you're wondering, in a pinch, the uh, bolts from a carrier bearing on a C10 will actually bolt this on. You know, there's that, in case you ever needed it. So the issue is, these bolts are too long to go in this side. They work fine on the other side, because it's angled differently. They'll go right in that one. So what I'm going to do is cut the end off one of them. There it is, it's cut off, and I've actually run a nut onto it, so now I can run that nut off and clean the threads up. 
there it is let's put it in hey it fits now they sure don't make these things easy to work on do they i don't understand yes we should disconnect the battery while we're messing around with all the electrics in here is it some sort of like matrix special code that you have to do to get in here or what i guess that's why the distributor cap was off makes sense now i just don't understand why you would do it like this why i say why i'm gonna have to take the bolts out of it and put them in once it's down there because i can't hold them in there and try and angle it in there at the same time somebody out there knows how this works and can do it in half a second flat and is laughing at me right now look at this idiot you know, I'm okay with that. I'll put it in there eventually. It might take me a while, that's all. We'll be back when I figure this out. Good news, folks. That assembly is in there and tight, and we spun the engine over, and nothing leaks out of it. So that's a big plus. Now, let's talk about these points. They are pretty crusty. Like, uber crusty. Yeah, pretty bad. So I'm going to see what I can do about cleaning them up, and then we'll see if we have any spark. Probably not, because that's just the way this is going, but we'll try. All right, we've cleaned the points up good. Now let's see if we have any spark. Spin her over, AJ. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Well, let's see what we can do about the rest of this ignition system. I think we might have a shot. I had to do some creative engineering on the uh, distributor cap and coil wire here, but I think, I think, that we have made some progress and we can get this back in here I'm not really sure which wire goes where so we might have to sort that out first we have to actually get the cap on it which is quite the feat apparently there's the top clip and there's the bottom clip. Okay, that's some progress. And then we can plug our coil wire in. That's really, really loose. I wonder if the old clip broke off in there. That's possible. Well, we'll sort that out in a minute. Let's figure out where these wires go. Well, the cap isn't marked to indicate where any of them go, so that's fun. Why wouldn't they put them in a circle? Why are they on top of each other? I don't. All right, well, let me do some Googling, how you figure out where all this goes, and then uh, we'll be back. All right, we got some brake clean in, everything's hooked up. We're going to give her a shot, see what happens. times the chunk, right? Here we go. So I discovered the distributor is completely loose and it was backfiring. I'm pretty sure that's why it wouldn't, you know, start. So now that we've got that hopefully straight, we're gonna try her again. Hit it. All right, we're closer. Spin it. Whoa, we've got a new problem. This thing is pouring oil out everywhere. Oh my. Let's get in and have a look at that, shall we? My bush fix down there on that oil filter assembly 
it's it's not working it's not sealed to the block there's oil coming out of there and uh, I didn't really realize it till we had cranked it over for a while and I heard something dribbling and then I took a look and this is what I found great big puddle oil underneath of the car that's no bueno I think that's gonna do it for this episode it made noise it'll run I think the timing's a wee bit off somebody was messing, messing with that distributor I'm gonna sort that out I gotta figure out how to get a seal on that oil filter assembly so that it quits putting oil all over my floor in places where there normally isn't oil so I'm just gonna coat the whole thing so it's even I hope you enjoyed the video we're going to get it running I promise so make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so you can see what we do next and don't forget we're going to stop with Cletus on the 21st of July. That's at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. We'll be on there with uh, Robert's Garage. He's a great dude. A lot of y'all know him. Come check us out. Say hi. See what's going on. Until then, thanks for watching another episode of My Legacy Garage. We'll see you next time.